Hey Jocko, so I had a wild idea to make a script that will put a fusion composition onto a timeline and maybe also change some text. So let me find the title. So I have a title name, that's a fusion composition. It has one, two and maybe more input fields for the text that you can change potentially. And if you have this as a template, you would automatically make a project, name it, also make a timeline, change the timeline resolution at the frame rates and also maybe change the name of the timeline. Then put this fusion template onto a timeline and change the text and everything else automatically. This would be useful if you have a template for maybe short videos that you would use constantly. Now how do you do that? You do that with scripting. At least you would try to. So you can go to help documentation and you have developer. Inside here you will find the scripting folder which is what we want. You have to read me text. I'll be using Lua because it's easier to use. You don't need anything else. It comes with DaVinci Resolve or actually DaVinci Resolve supports Lua so you don't need to install anything. And then you have a bunch of commands that you can use. Now in this case it's okay but the document is quite long and not nicely formatted. So this is what I forgot to mention. When you open DaVinci Resolve developer scripting, you have the readme file, but we also have some examples and modules, but the modules are in Python. Let's take a look at some examples. So you have Python and Lua examples. The one that I'll be using are Lua, but instead of opening each one in a notepad, we can go to the DaVinci Resolve API, the unofficial one, and click on examples. And these are the examples that are included. So we have the Lua examples, and you will simply be able to see the code quickly. So what you can do is type in unofficial DaVinci Resolve scripting, and you would find this website. So it's direct.github.io DaVinci Resolve API docs. This is the same file as I have just shown you, but it's formatted a bit nicer. Now when you have a Lua script, how you will run it is go to workspace, we will show the console, so you can see if you have any errors like this one, and you can clear it, and I'll be using Lua, but you can use Python 2 and Python 3. Python 2 was not found, and Python 3 was also not found. So Lua is what I'll use. And when you run a script, you'll go to scripts. And I have Reactor installed, but I don't want to use Reactor. Now you have the color page and the delivery page. If you select either one of them, this will switch to either the color page or the delivery page. But you want to use your own scripts. So I have one. It's this one, test. I'll open it in Notepad++ so you can see what it is and I've put in a path where you have to put it. So I'll copy this section. So app data is what you want, but this by default is hidden. So I'll go to C, I have the hidden folders enabled, but if I didn't, I'll simply go to this folder, so C users and the username, and I'll paste this in. And now I'm inside the script folder, and what I'll do is I'll simply take this script test.lua, paste it here. I'll close this one because if I make any changes, I want the changes to be visible to the Vinci Resolve, so I'll open this test.lua. And actually I'll just rename it to tutorial script. So now let's see what we can actually do with the scripts. To start off, we have resolve. Let's see what that is. Do we, do we find any resolve method? So the way I understand it is this resolve, this is just a variable, you could name this whatever you wanted, but this resolve function or a method returns the resolve window. So this, this whole screen, this is resolve. Then this variable, I called it project manager, you could also call it whatever you wanted. So now the project manager will get get project manager. So what is the project manager? Well. 
This is the project manager. This is what you get. So we get the project manager. So in the project manager, now that it's opened, we can make a project. So we can create a project and give it a name. If this exists, then it doesn't do anything. Now when the project is made, we can specify some settings. Let's see if we find these settings. So set settings. We do get some settings here, but we have to scroll up. So see, okay, this is under the project, which is good. But what values can you use in the setting name and setting value? And check the section below, which section? So we have setting values all the way at the end. So we have super scale, we have timeline frame rate, and we have a bunch of other options, as we can obviously set the width and the height. So let's go to Fusion Scripting Guide. So what we'll do is we'll find online Fusion 8 Scripting Guide. This is really outdated, but it's the only thing that we have. And uh, let's see if we find anything with set setting and we don't. So as you can see, this is really, really lacking. Maybe you can go to the project setting so you can have the width and the height for the timeline resolution, the frame rate. Maybe you could also adjust the playback frame rate, but it's poorly documented. So I have no idea which options you can actually use. Anyway, back to the code. In this case, a short project, project would be created with the settings, timeline frame rate with 30, the width at 1080p and height 1920. So this script will make a project for short form content. But this is now just the project, nothing is inside. We then have project get media pool. So when you call this function or a method, so in the edit page, this is the media pool, as you can see, and by default, nothing is inside. And you have to open this before you can actually do anything with it. So that is why we get media pool, and you can change this name to anything. And also when you use Lua commands, you need to use the colon when you call methods. So if you use dots, like I've done previously, I made a mistake, called it like that, the code will still run, but this section won't do anything. So now we have the empty media pool and now we want to add the timeline to it. So we'll create an empty timeline and we'll name it this 1080p by 1920 shorts. Then we need to select the timeline. So we select the current timeline. If we have multiple timelines, in this case, I know we only have one timeline. So index one, and then we simply set the current timeline, which is the only one that we have, which is this one that we've made. So now what can you do once you have the timeline? Well, I can uncomment this and I'll show you what this will do. And I will run the code. So I have this timeline, I'll simply delete it. So I now have just the project. The project currently is set to 2560 by 1440p. But now I'll go to workspace scripts and run this one. Let's go to the project settings. As you can see, the timeline format was changed. The name was also changed of the project and the name of the timeline is also changed. And what this piece of code did at track video is now instead of one video clip, I have two video clips. I will delete it, so I only have one video. So you could add as many video and audio tracks as you wanted. But the only issue I have with this is that you can't put content on a specific video or audio track. Not at least that I know of. So now we have the timeline and we can try to put something on. Now I wanted to put some fusion composition on, but I had no luck with that. However, you can put a text plus and a text node. Now, if you use a text node, it looks like this, exactly the same as above, except you won't have the fusion in the name and you have to change the text plus to text. And also you can't really do a lot with the text. The text plus, at least you can change the contents of it. 
and I'll show you how that is done. So now I'll just make a text node, text plus node. And as you can see, we have a text plus node, which is exactly the same as if I've done it manually like so. Now, if you want to change the contents, let's take a look what actually has to be done. First, you have to open the Fusion page. So what it will do is select this text node and go into the Fusion page. This is what it will actually do. Then in the Fusion page, we'll tell it to resolve. This is now the Fusion window, not the Edit page window. So now it sees, uh -huh, okay, this is the Fusion window. And then we need to get the Fusion composition, which is get current composition. So we get all of the nodes that are inside this Fusion composition. And then we need to find a tool, a node with the name of template. When you make a text plus, the node that it makes is called template, as you can see. So this will then find and select the template node, and then we can change the input. In this case, we want to change the input of styled text. So this is the styled text. If you look in the bottom left, when I mouse over it, it says styled text. So this is a thing that you want to change. So custom title, so we change it to something else. And we can change it simply by inputting a value. Now you can change the value like so, by typing in a string in quotations or a text inside quotations. But you could also type in a variable, maybe my string equals my custom text, and then you would type in my string. Now these two are the same. When you call this set input method, my string will get replaced with the value that it holds, which is my custom text. And then once you do this, you have to go back into the edit page. So that is why you open back the edit page. If you don't, you will stay in the fusion page, which is what I can actually show you. Run the command. Now you may see a difference. In the preview, you see custom title, but in the inspector, you actually see my custom text. But if I now go back to the edit page, which is what we'll do in the code, this changes to my custom text. So that is why I also need this line of code. So don't actually see that you went inside the Fusion page to change the text. So let me just show you that quickly. As you saw, we didn't go into the Fusion page and we're back in the edit page with the text plus node and the text changed to my custom text. Now you can also insert the text and I will uncomment all of the lines. What this action does is it will make a text node, not a text plus. We'll get the items in track called video. So you can either use video or audio tracks. And the track will start with one. Because as I said, the winch resolve doesn't start indexing with zero. Then we'll get all of the items in this track one. And the one that we want is item one, which in this case will be text plus. Text plus is item one and text will be item two. And then in the item, we can get its name. So in this case, we should get the name text plus. And wherever the playhead is, when you run the code, that is where this will all be added. So we get text plus and text, and text plus was printed out. So in this case, it printed out text plus because this was item one. If I put in item two, it would print out text. Now I did also, try to find a way how we could maybe set an input for the text. No such luck. I thought it was rich text, but what the issue is, well, let me just show you what can happen. So in this case, I have an issue and the issue is attempt to call method set input. So if I go to set input and this is an item. So let's find set input. We have again an issue we don't find any set input method. But the fusion scripting does have some. So let's find set input. And now because this is fusion, it says tool. So this is for fusion only. As you can see, it's not for the edit page. That is why it works inside the fusion page, but not in the edit page. And you have some examples here. In the merge node, you could change the angle. You can also change the ID value and the time. So you could also specify a frame value. 
So as you can see, this documentation is really lacking and it is now seven years old, almost eight. Now what else can you do with scripting? Well, you can go to we saw class the forum and you will have in the Blackmagic design, you have fusion scripting and you also had Vinci Resolve scripting. You should take a look at the Resolve scripting essentials and all of the other topics that you find interesting. And maybe you will actually find something that you need. But what I wanted to do was to take a template which has a bunch of text, text inputs that is, change all of the text to what I wanted from maybe a CSV file and then also export it. Now, as it is at the moment, in the Winch Resolve, I don't see any option how to put a custom template onto a timeline and change the texts and maybe other settings as well. And to do that, the only option that I see at the moment is to use something like AutoHotKey, which in my opinion is not an ideal solution, but at least you can do it. And why did I want to do that? Well, if you have a ton of short videos to do that basically look the same, well, you can do that in Canva by using the batch tool. It's not displayed here, but you can use creating designs in bulk and it's quite easy to do. So in Canva, what you would do is you would upload the CSV file, which has a bunch of text entries. Maybe I would have just two, like in this example, and I would specify the first one is the left side, the second one is the right side. And if I would have a thousand entries, it could make a thousand videos and it would link the left side text to the left side and the right side text to the right side. And that would be done automatically without having to me copy and pasting the text for a thousand videos. And then also those videos can be exported individually. So don't have to do any cutting. Now I hope you got some insight on what can be achieved with DaVinci Resolve API scripting. I do know a lot of solutions take advantage of making markers and you can also import the media and make timelines from the included media pools that you've imported. So that is also something that you can do automatically. But if you do know how to put custom templates onto a timeline and make some changes automatically, do let me know in the comments. Now I know that this video was technical, but if you found any use for it, you know what to do. I'm Simon and until next time Jackal, keep it digital.